took my sin He buried it No longer I could live Now Jesus lives in me For I was dead in sin But I woke up to see the light Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, church. Isn't it great to be in the house of God this morning? Welcome to you all. Welcome to you all at home who are watching. And welcome to those in the overflow rooms there. We pray this morning that you can join with us as we praise and we honour and we glorify our Lord. Amen. Amen. Creation 
waking up to kids of come. Now forever Come on, folks, let's look to Jesus. Let's look to the Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who is the author and the perfecter of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, in, in Ephesians, it, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, But now, in Christ, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Do you know, the reason we even get to come before God is because of Jesus. We have been brought near to him by the blood of Christ. It says, For he himself is our peace, who made the two groups one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He's talking about breaking down cultural walls so that we can all be one in Christ. Do you know, if, if you need a special dose of supernatural peace this morning, I just sense that we can pray this across this room, across the overflow rooms, and across the live stream this morning. And you can receive peace. So is anyone come here this morning and you're feeling distressed in any way? You're feeling like there's a lack of peace in your life? Well, I'm going to pray peace over you right now in Jesus' name. So Lord, I, I want to thank you. We want to thank you together that the reason we get to come before you is Jesus. It's not our performance. It's not our pedigree. It's, it's nothing to do with our past. It's all because of Jesus. And so, Lord, for every person here today who is sitting or standing before you, I thank you that they can come to you because of Jesus. Race doesn't matter. Culture doesn't matter. Nothing matters apart from you, Jesus, who reconcile us with yourself and reconcile us with each other. And so this morning, God, we pray peace across this room. We pray your peace across the overflow rooms. We pray, pray your peace across the live stream in Jesus' name. Let your peace fall, God. Let your peace, peace fall on people. Let your peace fall on their hearts. Let your peace fall on their spirits in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, you can either take your seats or you can remain standing as you like. Um, Sue Taylor is going to come now and she's going to tell us what's happening in the life of the church this week. So 
this is the first time she's ever done this. Do you want to welcome her as she comes? <laughs> Hardest gig in the church, Sue. Thanks, Pastor Dave. Okay, we have so much going on in the church. Um, this week, uh, oh, tonight, the Pastoral Care Worker Commission Service at St Albans. It's my turn to struggle over that word. <laughs> in Barry at 7 p.m., let's uh, all get along and support our pastoral care workers. Pammy and Erin, are there as they're inducted for the year. And the service, after the service, there'll be supper in the hall. So that's an extra good reason to go as well. Monday nights, Monday nights is um, band worship practice. They uh, meet for rehearsals every fortnight, uh, 7 p.m. Jason Griesda is the music director and everybody's welcome. So there's Jason. Um, he's always on the lookout for anybody with some talents. If you can sing, if you can play a musical instrument, if you want to be involved in the um, band, see Jason. He's your man. And Tuesday night, and it's back on Tuesday nights again, uh, 7 p.m., the equip group, uh, Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. If you want to um, get more info into that, see um, Pammy or um, Scott, and <laughs> he's, he's not here today, but Pammy is. Um, and you can still um, enrol in that. You can still turn up and, and um, participate in that equipped group. And then we have so much, honestly. We are so blessed to have such great leaders who want to fill us and equip us and provide for us in our walk with God. You know, they're doing all they can to help us on our spiritual walk. So we have a Nothing to Prove is starting in March, and I can't wait for this one. Joella is starting a book group. She, we're reading Jenny Allen's Nothing to Prove together. Stop trying to prove you're, we're worth something. Stop trying to be enough. Instead, learn to rely on Jesus and let Jesus be enough for all of us. To, particip to participate in this, you'll need to buy and read this book. It's about $25 for the hard copy or you can buy it online on ebook for $7. And if you're interested, see Joella, our famous Joella. Um, we have a new, another new quick group starting. This one is Pastor Dave. It's two parts, Friday the 19th of March at 7 p.m. And then Saturday the 20th of March at 10 a.m. And this includes manual and spiritual gift discovery. Um, so you just see Pastor Dave if you want to be involved with that. And I can't wait for that one to start either. I'm going to be so busy. I won't know whether I'm coming or going. And then we've got the um, Riverland Central Youth. They're off surfing and abseiling at Victor Harbour. Yes, I don't do heights, so I would pass on that anyway. But it sounds fantastic. <laughs> I am just so envious that these kids get to do so much fun stuff. The cost is $100 per person. And that includes all the travel activities and the evening meal. The numbers are limited, so if you want to register, see Daryl down the back and um, he will uh, help you out there. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much, Sue. Hey, I've got one more announcement to make, if that's okay. Who loves babies? Yeah. yeah. I love babies. So we've had two new babies in the church in recent times. Um, we, of course, have a Guiazda baby. We have an Ugbo baby. And very soon, we're going to have a Zimmerman baby. <laughs> so isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Jess and Luke are pregnant. And we're really excited about welcoming this new little eternal being into the world. It's going to be so cool. Now, I'll just put it out there. If it's a boy, the name David is a particularly <laughs> nice name. All right? I'm not telling you what to do, but... I'll just put it out there. I'm, I'm, jo I'm joking. I'm joking. Call, it, call him whatever you like, but you can have multiple, multiple middle names, okay? Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, let's stand to our feet. We're going to keep worshipping God. And just want to say, you know, 
often when we get into this worship bracket, we talk about people um, being able to give prophetic words or whatever, but I don't want to limit it to that this morning. If you have a word of encouragement, I want you to come and bring that. Uh, if you're part of the Riverland family, and Riverland Central family, and you simply have a scripture that has been speaking to you and un- unlocking revelation in you through the week and you want to come and share that with the church, please come and talk to me about that as well. If, even if you've had something just outstanding happen this week in terms of good news and you just sense the hand of God over that good news, that can be encouragement for the rest of the church. So what I'd like you to do is if, if, if you sense that some of that is going to somehow lift up or build the body, come and have a talk to me in, sometime in this next song or two and we'll, we'll make a way, if that fits, to, to kind of make that happen in our meeting so that people can rise. Lord Jesus, together we simply ask that you will stir the prophetic across your people this morning. We ask that you stir words of knowledge Lord, maybe someone has a tongue and uh, a, a word in tongues and you want to bring that, God. Maybe there's a, a scripture that's burning in somebody's heart and, and that's going to unlock something new this morning. Whatever it is, God, we just open ourselves up to your presence. And guys, I, I, I just suggest, dare to ask God to use you this morning. Let's worship you, mate. same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I Count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I I will I choose to pray to glorify glorify name of all names nothing can stand against I choose to pray to glorify glorify name of all names nothing can stand against I choose to praise, glorify, glorify, name of all names, nothing can stand against, oh yes I will, sing for joy in the lowest valley, yes I will, bless your name. Yes, I will sing for 
your joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will all my days. Yes, I Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, when all seems to be lost, Lord, we will praise and we will honor and we will glorify your name through those darkest times, Lord. In the midst of despair and anguish and fear and pain and suffering, Lord, we will praise and we will honor and we will lift up your name. We will rise above the situation. Like an aeroplane climbing up through the clouds, we will soar and praise and honor you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. is my worship this is my offering in every moment I withhold nothing I'm learning to trust you even when I can't see you and even in suffering I have to believe it if you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. But I want to follow my own way. I'm done chasing feelings, Spirit, lead me. It felt like a burden, but once I could grasp me, you took me further, further than I was asking. Just simply to see you, it's worth it all. My life is an altar, let your fire fall. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your way. I'm done chasing feelings. Me at my worst, and 
And even when I don't remember, you remind me of my love. I don't trust my ways. I'm trading in my thoughts. I lay down everything, cause you're all that I want. I've landed on my knees. This is a cup you have for me. Even when it don't make sense, I'm gonna let your spirit lead. I'm gonna let your spirit lead. I'm let your spirit lead. I want to If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Push the life the way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit. We just ask God and then the Spirit to lead us. You know, the presence is here this morning. The presence is upon us. The presence is with us. Some of you Jesus may have spoken to. Some of you Jesus may have spoken to already. He's got healings. He's got things for you. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. You must do what it says. It says, Spirit, lead us. Wherever you ask me, I will go. You need to do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. The words are empty. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. I want to pray for all of those this morning. Father, I want to thank you for for your word and for speaking to us. Thank you for giving us ears and hearts to hear you and and to obey you and Lord I just really want to empower everybody to step out where it's uncomfortable if that's what he's called you to do be uncomfortable because you don't grow where you're comfortable and if God's got a healing for you reach out grab it if he's got miracles for you let them wash over you Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is here this morning very, very strongly. I mean, He's always here and He's always strong, but today it's just, I usually come here and I think He's told me something and I think, you know, is this right? Should I be doing this or saying this? And then I come in here David, Joella, or somebody else stands up, or several people stand up and speak on the same theme that he gave me, and I know, because I'm not coming up here in my own strength, and I, I always think, is this right, is this right, is this right, you know, and yet I come here and it's right, <laughs> it's right, so understand, he wants you to understand something clearly, this is an encouragement day, this is the day of encouragement for you all for you all every one of you was selected before the world began every one of you he knew you 
He knew everything you were going to do in your life, every sin you were going to commit, every good thing you were going to do, and He chose you. And inside you, He placed His Holy Spirit, who is God. How do we know? How do we work out that God is three persons and one God? We don't. He just tells us, and we don't try and work it out because He's God, and our little heads can't get around it. But there it is. The very presence of God is in you, and you are His temple. And you are empowered to do the mission that Christ has called you to. And what is the greatest commandment? Love. Love one another. Love God. And love people who he wants to bring here and he will point out to you. That is your mission. And we all do it in different ways. But every one of you is called to the power of the Holy Spirit. Every single one of you carries with you. Just ask the demons. They know who you are. They know who you are and they fear the day that you operate in the power that God gave you. You look around and you see people like Andreas or Jason or everyone up here operating in the gift that God gave them. And you think... You know, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. No, you're not, except for one thing. God has called you worthy. God has given you his own Holy Spirit to live in you. There is no greater thing that could be done for you than to be chosen as the temple of the Holy Ghost. So don't look around and don't say either that your sin is preventing you. She sins. He sins. Oh my God, I sin. These guys do. But despite that, because the sin has no power because Christ has defeated the power of sin. God knew everything you were going to do and he's called you to operate. I don't know what your gifts are. I don't know. Mine's encouragement. But it's there. It's there for you. He wants this church to be full of people who use the gifts of the Spirit in the way that they have been anointed, every one of you. And he wants you to look at something to start with. When he was asked what his greatest attribute was, he said, my love, my compassion. And that's us, because we need to be reflecting the way that the Son reflected the Father when he was on earth and showed him. It's up to us to show that to each other and the community. And it starts with love. Today, God wants you to think about everyone in this church that you don't like. And he said, it's okay. Because we don't like people for lots of reasons. But he says, he will not tolerate you not loving them. And he doesn't expect you in your human strength to love them because we're just not up to it. He says, call on my love so that you can love them with my love. It will break down so many barriers and you will be following the first commandment through the power of God. And don't say, Andreas is above me or the pastors are above me or the band is above me because they're operating in their gifts. None of us are above anybody else. Do not not let your sin, your shame of your sin stop you from going and doing what God wants. Because it's been dealt with. And he knew before time began every sin you were going to commit. You can't hide from him. So get closer. Just get closer. And do the things he wants you to do and operate in his love and seek the power that the Spirit wants us to use to to reach people and to love people. And this will be this will be just a turning point. So there we go, we've heard very clearly from God. Lord, for those who feel like they are not enough. For those who feel like they they walk through life not being enough, Lord, pour your presence out upon them. Pour your grace out upon them. Remind them, Lord, 
of who they are in Christ. And Lord, I pray you lead them right now towards our upcoming equip group on not being enough. And Lord, for those who don't know their gifts, those who don't know how they're supposed to operate, Lord, I, I pray now for divine revelation. I pray now for divine insight. You know, a big part of our gifts is, of understanding our gifts is understanding the way we're wired, understanding the unique, unique way God has made us. So, Lord, I, I thank you that nobody in this room is an accident. Nobody in this room is a mistake. But we are perfectly created by you for a specific task. And so, Lord, I pray for people right now for godly confidence. And I pray, Lord, you'll remind them about the upcoming Spiritual Gifts Workshop. <laughs> where they can help to unlock their gifts. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Let's worship God once more in song and then we'll get into the Word. It all comes back to Jesus. So because of Jesus It all comes back to Jesus So because of Jesus it all. to pay for our sins, his resurrection from the dead and his ascension to heaven where Jesus now sits forever in the place of honour at the right hand of God Almighty. The Bible says in Hebrews 7.25 that Jesus is able to save completely all who come to God through him. Since he will live forever, he will always be there 
to remind God that he has paid for their sins, our sins, with his own blood. How about that? Saved completely. How wonderful. Faith in Jesus' sacrifice all also means that we can always come into God's holy presence and we can tell him all our worries. And Father God listens, cares and helps us. My grandson Levi, just four, knows that Google is a great help. Last week he was playing mums and dads with his twin sister. Isabel was putting the little dolly to bed and Levi said, Hey Google, play lullaby music for toddlers. Yes, Google's helpful for toddlers too. But Google is definitely no match for God. Late last year, when my heart was beating way too fast, I had no energy. No energy to walk far. No energy to talk much. And no energy to think clearly. And Google wasn't much help at all. Google did find the meaning of atrial fibrillation for me and YouTube found songs for me to praise God and Jesus. But it was my Father God who helped me every single minute of the day, giving me a peaceful focus, strength and power to move. Ten steps to the toilet, he helped me. I desperately cry out, Father, your word says that you give strength to the weary and you give power to the weak. Well, God, I'm weak and weary. Please give me strength and power to move in Jesus' name. And he did. I also personalised Isaiah 41.10. I will not fear as you are with me. I will not be dismayed as you are my God. Father God, you will strengthen me and help me and you will uphold me with your righteous right hand. Thank you in Jesus' name. And of course, God did help me. I simply came in faith in Jesus. I thank God for powerfully sustaining me during those three long months. Finally, the specialist gave me a cardioversion, which is to stop the heart and then jumpstart the heart back into correct rhythm. You know, with the boof, I think. Boof. My energy returned. And most importantly, I thank God for Jesus who paid the death penalty for my sin and your sin and so restored us to our holy, powerful Father God. The Bible says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver, It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. That's from 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. God paid the ransom. Jesus suffered and died for us. And we simply come in faith in Jesus, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Please stand with your biscuit and Jews. Well, I just thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your wonderful plan of sending Jesus to die for our sins. He was a sacrifice. We just come in faith. Thank you for that. Thank you. You are so powerful and so wonderful and so holy, and we can come into your presence. Right. Just take your biscuit and personally thank God for Jesus. Hmm, I 
a mouthful of this one. Now, take the juice and thank God for Jesus' blood spilt on the cross to pay for our sins. Thanks so much, Carolyn. Please take your seats. It's all because of Jesus, hey? It's all because of Jesus. Who's been enjoying our Ephesians preaching series so far? Yeah, yeah, it's been really good, hasn't it? It's been great. Well, one of the other things that I love and one of the other things that I'm really excited about is when that up-and-coming preachers have a go when they come and they they bring the Word of God and they bring it with freshness and they bring it with trembling. Um, and I'm very excited to announce the preaching debut of Andre Root this morning. So Andre is going to come and he's going to bring us the third in our series, Power in Christ. So welcome, Andre. Come and minister to us. Let's encourage him this morning. Thank you, guys. All the glory to God. Now, this is a funny start. We are supposed to go on with Ephesians, and we will. But I just want to continue, Graham. Thank you for wrecking us this morning. And um, I know the Lord has got a, a, a picture of each and every one of us in his wallet. But this morning, he took that picture out of Graham. And said, My boy. <laughs> Thanks for that. And, and it's like he had a... a um, you. You said everything here, so this is the presence of the Lord. So he's confirming a lot of stuff. Just a, 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 a word that I wrote down, and I didn't know what to do with that, Gray. Um, we all know that God is in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is in the Bible. And we've got Jesus in the Bible. And all of us say we don't know why we know it, but there's three of them that the Bible doesn't specify. But I just want to give you a, a, a scripture, and I didn't know who, why I must write it down. When he created the word, when God created the word, Genesis 1 verse 26, remember this, says, Let us make man according to our image. Let us make us. So they, they were already there in the beginning, the Holy Spirit. So there's your answer, Graham. And then, then it's just a, something that for somebody here, yeah, you mentioned a scripture and the Lord's been putting on my heart, Matthew 6 verse 33. Put the kingdom of God first, and he will give you all these things. What's all these things? Clothes, something to eat, and all of that. If there's something of you that's going to take a new step, you don't know how to do it, step over the chicken line and go for it. <laughs> so there's your word. Is that, if that's spoken to anyone, that's your word for today. Graham, <laughs> again with the words you brought, just on Matthew 6. Verse 14, you spoke about sin. And think about this, church. It's as simple as forgiving. I just want to read you a scripture out of 6 verse 14. Like I said, uh, Graham Rector, this old preach. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you, don't know forgive, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I don't want to chase you away. We just started. It's just take out to your heart. Forgive that person that you've got something against. You'll see things change. And it's, it will be a weight off your shoulder. The guy that you have something against maybe doesn't even know that you have a grudge against him. He's going on with his life. He's just, he doesn't know about it. Just let him go. You'll see things change in this life. Well, sorry for wrecking you guys, but... That's, I'm just bringing what the Lord is putting on our heart. And Graham, thanks for that. That's, that's great to see you standing up like that. Don't stop. Light the fire. <laughs> Light the fire. Okay, let's go on with Ephesians. We continue with Ephesians, and what a great book it is, uh, the book of Ephesians. But before we continue, let's just recap what David and Jella spoke about. Ephesians 1. 
where we were chosen in Christ, each, and, each of us that's sitting here, um, you accept the call or you refuse the call. If you sincerely follow Christ, you are not just called, but you are chosen. Each and every one of you sincerely heard the word and you accepted Christ into your life, so you are chosen as you are sitting here today. You are so powerful sitting here. You won't sleep if you know how powerful you are at night. You've got so much stuff to do. You have to put that person to preach. have to show uh, the light to God to that person. There's so much stuff going on. That was in Ephesians 1 with David. And then Jehoiada spoke about to be alive in Christ and that we were the walking dead. Who of you know that all of us here, if we don't have Christ, if we didn't have Christ, we were the walking dead. There was nothing in our spirit. We didn't invite him in. Anything can come in and go and as they please. So you can hear the wrong voices. You can, but that's a bit in depth. So, so today we'll continue on Ephesians 3, uh, the power in Christ. And we will look at three aspects today. It is the power through prayer, the power through the spirit, and the power through love. But before we continue, I want to share scripture with you. 2 Timothy 3, verse 6. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our life. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So if there's anybody telling you that the book of Ephesians wasn't meant for you, there's the scripture. This whole book was made for each and every one of us. These people in, in the word of God, they took the hard knocks. We can learn out of that. If somebody tells you something or says something, you can, you can go and relate it to God's word. But are you saying, is that true to what God's word says who I am? Is it true? You just go refer back to the Bible and see what he says. So I just want to share that to you because some people will say the books of Ephesians was never written to everyone. It was just to the Ephesians. They will try and whip it. And it, it looks so convincing, but the Spirit of God will convince you that it, this is for you. Yeah, there's your scripture. I'll stick to that if somebody say that wasn't meant for me. So everything in the Old Testament where it looks like God had a wrath, that's in the, that is where it was just based on moral. And Jesus came to set us free. Everybody get, gets to be set free. They just have to choose it, like we've already heard in Ephesians 1. But before we start, let's just pray. Lord, I thank you that you will be, you'll bring the word, what you want to say, that you already have done, Father. And we thank you that you confirm so much stuff, Father. Father, we thank you that you anoint my lips where I speak, Father. And those that you, that's not from you, Lord, or um, that you don't want to talk to this church, Father, let it fall on deaf ears, Father. We thank you that you bring your word and that your spirit speak to each and every one here today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Let's dig in. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Guys, when we have the spirit, we've got unlimited resources. What does it mean if you want to start a baking business? Let's go in the flesh, as people say, I've got unlimited resources. I can bake all the cakes I want and make money. I'll never run out. Now, the Lord did it in, in the Old Testament where, where he made the oil nonstop. He can do all of that. But if we have Jesus, we've got all the unlimited resources. If somebody's sick, we can go for it. We can go and pray for the person. If somebody needs to be set free, you are loaded. Just pull the trigger. Uh, the, then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. The roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as, it all, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it. Through it is too great to understand fully. 
Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God. Let's, let's, uh, let's us as a church say that together. One, two, three. Now all glory to God. Let's keep that like that. Because everything in our life that's good, that's from Him. That's from Him. If something bad happens to us, I always say, why did God allow that? If somebody, um, let's say, steals something, no, the devil made me do it. And if something bad happens to somebody, they say, no, why did God allow that? It's, it's, out of, it's mind-blowing how people can think. Good things is God. It's like plus and minus. Bad things is the enemy. Good things come from God. And that's it. That's it. And I'm sticking to that. Glory to him in the church and, the, and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's start by the first point, power through prayer. In the scripture, Paul was uh, uh, praying for spiritual growth. It's an unselfish pray that he prays for somebody else. How much of us pray for somebody else? Just think about it. We just want our own thing sometimes. But we, th we do pray for other people. But if, if you've got an another member in the church that's spiritually growing, what will happen in this church? If they just go and go and go, what will happen? We all grow. We'll, we'll see the manifest, manifest Manifesting, English, Afrikaans, whatever language, <laughs> manifesting of the Spirit, you'll see it in this church. And it's just not one. The Lord will confirm it, like He's confirming words through grain. That, that's how the, the, the Lord rolls, man. Don't you just love the presence of the Lord? Guys, we need to get excited. Great, let me try this side. Guys, we need to get excited. <laughs> get excited with the Lord. Let's get stirred up what the Lord's got for us. Now, to come back to prayer, sometimes when we pray to the Lord, and, and Paul prayed to the Ephesians, like I mentioned, it's, it's an unselfish prayer that he did to some, something. And when we pray to the Lord, we sometimes complain a little bit, you know. We ask the Lord, Lord, will you just send me blessings? And then he sent a big truck over there to go to my boy there. He has to arrange all of this stuff. Then the truck drove 100 kilometers. He's got another five to go, and you say, that's not going to happen. Ah, that's not going to happen. You speak your unbelief. Because Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, the tongue has life and death. Those who speak it, they will bear the fruit. So it's got another five kilometers to go, and the Lord says, ah, he, he doesn't believe that. I think send the truck back. I don't know what he, he doesn't know what he wants. So <laughs> watch your mouth when you speak. Uh, and it doesn't, you can't, I'll give you scripture. You can't, if, if we pray to the Lord, we must keep it open. Keep it positive. Let's have a look at some scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. Let me read that first part again. Always be joyful. Never stop. Stop praying. Matthew 5. But I say, I say, love your enemies. Graham, you spoke about that this morning. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who prosecute you. How easy is it that? That guy that annoys you at work and always cussing and uses the name in uh, Lord in vain. Peter said, <laughs> he said to Jesus, Lord, shall we call down fire to come and consume him? And Jesus said, no, you don't know what you're asking so, and I'm honest, I, I, if, if they blaspheme against the Lord, I just, Lord, just send a, just one, just, just this one. Can we break the rules a bit, just so that they can see, because it's a joke to them. They, they don't have any fear to God. But he loves even that people, because what did Paul do? And w w he wrote a third of the Bible. Look where we went. Just think about it. He was prosecuting the, the Christian. What happened to him? There's a Paul working with you, the guy that you maybe don't love in your heart. There's a Paul working with you. Jesus had a, had a few guys that wasn't qualified yet. You won't be the first. You'll make mistakes. In the Bible, Moses tapped the, the rock. 
when the Lord says, uh, I, I've said, talk to the rock, you tapped it, you will not see. But all of that wrath is gone because Jesus died for us on the cross. Do, you, do we understand what Jesus has done? We are free. We are so free that some people don't look at him. They don't want to look his way, but we've got so much to be thankful for. Where was I? Did, did anybody listen to me? <laughs> Where? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Don't worry ab about anything. When we start worrying, we complain because we want to speak our unbelief. We want to go and tell somebody, I've got this problem, and I don't like that. Uh, uh, I don't like John and Jack what they're doing and then you speak your unbelief about other people and that's when the complaints come through i mean we want sympathy from people but it's the wrong thing let's look at the second um, part of the scripture instead pray about everything so before we complain about something let's pray about it tell god what you need let him send that truck that was on his way just shut up for another five kilometers and it will reach its generation, uh, destination. <laughs> and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. It happens to us. And sometimes we just want to crawl into a bundle. I'm guilty of that. You can ask my wife. And then you just think, whoa, 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 whoa. What am I doing? This is not going to help. Nobody's going to pitch up here and help us then. We have to talk to the Lord. Which exceeds anything... We can understand. This is the same thing that um, Paul spoke in Ephesians 3, verse 19. Let's, let's go back to verse 19. And may your experience of love of Christ through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all fullness of life power that comes from God. Is there any, is, is everybody okay still? Okay. It's so quiet. Okay, let's continue. Just something to wrap your head around. When God created this world, just think how, how, how you can't limit God. Not none of you. Yeah. You, you, can't, you, you can limit him yourself, but you can't say, Lord, you can't do this. The scripture says that nothing is impossible for God. Just think about this. When the Lord created the heaven and the earth, he didn't have a begin or ending. We have a beginning. We were born and then we, we go to be with the Lord, our spirit. But just think about it. He was wrap your head around it. My wife says it's like, a, it's like a ring. There's no start. There's no finish. Just think about it. When he was there and he created the universe and he created us, some people, they bow their head to the universe. I said, no, I bow my head to the guy who created the universe. Why? You can have the, why do you want to go down a step? Just worship God. But just think about it. There's no beginning and no end. Think about it. He, he was there the whole time. Nobody created him. He was there. Don't limit God for what he wants to do in your life, guys. Spiritual growth, go for it. The scripture that I just mentioned, put the, 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 the kingdom of God first and the rest will be given to you. You will be surprised. Forgive people what they've done. Um, then James 4, verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend, spend it on your own pleasure. This is the flesh. When you have something, somebody gave you something. Let's say I say to, let's say, David, yes, a million dollars. The Lord says, and let's say, this is just an example. Um, oh, hopefully I'm prophesying. Um, <laughs> let's say, David, yes, a million dollars. You can keep $10,000, give the rest away. That's what the Lord says. Get in the car, you never see me again in your life. This is in my hand. Now you must... Now the flesh, you must kick the flesh out of the way. You must do what the Lord told you. Are you going to do what he told, uh, told you? Are you going to do what he said you must do? Very quiet, yeah? The flesh will hold on to that. Because if you do what he tells you to do, he'll bless you more. Next time he'll bring two million and he says, 20,000 is yours. Keep doing what I tell you. You're climbing the ladder. That's just in the flesh. What will he do in the spirit? If you first go into spirit, 
You cannot go in your flesh where you've not been in your mind or what you think about. You can't go there. Anything that you, that you do or think, you were there in your mind first. Every decision that you make is influencing somebody else. Think about it. If you make a phone call, oh, that man, there's somebody has to pick up that phone and answer it. Just nail it. Try to bow me. I've tried to think about it. There's a few instances, but it's very little. Every choice you make influence somebody else. Make good choices. Okay. That was, so that wraps it for the power through prayer. I just want to tell you a little story. But so much stories about prayer. But um, we went and uh, somebody phoned me up in South Africa and they asked me, there's this old man, yeah, he's 80 years old, he's got cancer, he's going to die. They said he's got three months to live. And we went over there, and we was, it's just opposite this house. But the Lord said, sent me up there because this guy across the street didn't know about it. This guy that phoned me said, no, my son already spoke to this old man, we can go and pray for him. And I walked over there, and I see this guy is walking a little bit at the back, and I thought, what's wrong? Why is he walking here? And I go to the old man, and I ask you guys must see, that's an 80-year-old man, how he's working in God. He's fit. And you won't say he's got cancer when you look at him. And we're like, wow, this man is just going and going and going. And I talk to him and I say, hello, sir, we just here, but in Afrikaans, here to pray. I can tell the story in Afrikaans, you won't understand it. <laughs> um, we just here to pray for you. And he says, pray for what? No. He said, you got cancer. And he says, no, I don't want any prayer. And he's just stubborn. And we stand there for a whole half an hour, and the people's just going out of the yard. And I can see the people are abusing this, this old man. They just, you can see he's, he's poor, and he, they just misuse him. And they just come and drop off, and they don't care about him. And we were standing about a half an hour there, and eventually this old man bent over to do something inside the car. And I said to him, okay, we'll quickly pray for you, then we'll leave. In the name of Jesus, and we pray. We command that cancer to leave and get out of his body. But just a quick prayer, and we just stood there because he looks like he, he will, you know, he won't take any prisoners. So we just quickly went, and he stayed like that, and we walked away. And I said to, to my friend, let's leave. Let's get, let's get out of here. And he just, we looked back, and as we looked back, he just came out like the far corners, and he says, thank you. And it's just like there's something happened in him. Yeah, and we didn't heard about this old man for months. And I just remember that, uh, about it. And I called my friend. I said, what about that old man? No, he doesn't know. He didn't even talk to him for months now. Four months, six months, he didn't talk to him. Eventually, he went, there, uh, went to his, his house. They, he, after the three months, this old man went to the doctor because he's not dead yet. And the doctors, they did tests, and he's free of cancer. And I was like, why do you guys tell it now? He says, I didn't know. I see he's living across you. Why didn't you go and do some follow-ups and that? They never saw him, but he got cured. So that's the, the, the power of prayer. Sometimes we don't want to do something, and we feel, ah, this is not going to work. But if you go for that, if you if, if just go for it, let's say you pray for somebody, that's a miracle if it manifests immediately. The body takes time to heal. This thing is chased away now. We just have to take authority. This church, this church can be dangerous if we just know what we've got. In, and not the, the bad dangerous, the good dangerous. You, you, we, we stepped into a hospital, and I'll slow down with that. We just went to pray for somebody, and this woman dived over the bed. And... We thought, what's wrong? She couldn't get out of the room. The presence of God will chase you running. And that lady, we found out later, she was the daughter of this father that we prayed for, and we heard the whole story. But she gave her life later to the Lord. She turned her whole life around. And we found out she's the one that's praying wrong stuff over and rituals and all that. But we fished, this, we fished the devil out. Run, devil, run. And um, But... The Lord will show you things to come. And we will get to that scripture now. He'll, the Spirit will show you things to come. Let's continue. 
power through the spirits, Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 18, just a quick recap. I pray that the glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have power to understand. And as all God's people should, the width, how long, how deep his love is. How do we understand God's love? We first have to belong to him. We have to receive his spirit. If you can just go to, I think it's the next slide. I just want to show you. Okay, yeah, that one. Okay, let's, let's read the previous scripture. Go one back. Sorry for that. To, to Ephesians 1 verse 13. Let's read that one, then you'll understand that one better. We're going a bit back in this series. We're rewinding. I don't know if you guys have a, had a show here where they look at the music program and they call it Rewind or something, and then you go, no? Okay. Take that one off me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it was a music program in South Africa. Obviously, it wasn't here. They didn't have an accent. Um, <laughs> but there was a show, a Rewind or something, a music show. And uh, there they, sh they go back to the old music and all that. So, But let's rewind back to Ephesians 1 verse 13. In him you also trusted, after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you all were also having... You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean if you are sealed with the Holy Spirit? If you seal something, can it come out? Can something go in? No. So if you go to the next picture, just to show you quickly, there's our spirit, our soul, and our body. Like you see there, God's Wi-Fi, it's always on. It's on full signal. It's up to us if we're going to receive the, it. The more we open up to the world, the less we'll hear it. That's the world's job. It's to blind you, keep you busy. What will you do? You rather go and watch a few hours of series. I have to catch up that series. I'll stop. I'm talking to a few of you. I'll stop. Um, then rather than to spend the time, I'm not condemning you. To just, it's not wrong. It's just if you want to flourish in the spirit, you have to do what you have to equip yourself. Because if you come upon somebody, and you know a little bit of word, you'll get a hiding. Because you have to take that thing and say, that's it, that's the end. You let my friend go, he's a, he's a man of God. You let him go, get out. Okay, let's do another stri uh, scripture. John 16, verse 13. Whoever, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all things. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. Now, how many things the Lord tells each and, of, each and every one of us when something, you think something just after it happens, and you think, oh, everybody say, oh, deja vu. The Lord is telling you something. My brother, I don't know if you guys know how it is in South Africa, the, the COVID's bad there. So eventually they take this opportunity to open up and, and, and clear places because some businesses can't do business. They have to close down. They can't just do business. So he lost his job. And um, he didn't have a job. He was sitting. He had to move out of his house. And he was sitting at home. He was trying stuff. He's building wood and he sells it. But that's just a drop in the, you know, in the bucket. Because everybody's sitting with the same thing. Just to keep going. Just to get bread. And I spoke to the Lord on the way. Uh, from work I just prayed to him with my eyes open um, I just prayed to him and I asked him Lord speak to me about my brother what's going on and you know I pray for a few people just talk to the Lord and help that person help this person and Lord I'm worried about this but I know I mustn't be because your scripture just in Ephesians says don't worry but just pray about it Lord, what are we going to do about this? And he said me the following words, and I didn't understand it. And he said, call your brother and tell him help is on the way. And I thought, you know, you are, this is not the Lord. I'm not going to do it. No. No, I'm going to, I don't think it's the Lord. I'm just making this up. This is myself. Hey? Yeah. I didn't want to go over the chicken. <laughs> 
And uh, eventually I'd, I'd got at home and I said, no, I'm going to, it's my brother. I can talk to him. Throw it in there. I, sp- I told him the whole thing. I said, Philip, I just got a feeling the Lord says the help is on the way. That's all I hear. I don't know. It's obvious the help is on the way. There's your word. S- left it. And I think a month went past and he, he sent me a message. He says, did you say help is on the way? I said, yes, why? And I'm like, what's this? Got it wrong or what? Maybe he's frustrated. And I sent him, yes, that's the exact words. He said, I just drove past the board. It says exactly the same words. I'm on my way to a work interview. And this work wow. in interview is when you get, in, in South Africa, when you get permanent work, you're, you're away because you get medical. It's different here. You get pension. Uh, you guys know the super and all that stuff. He just got from down to the, to the, to the ground. He just got up and he's, he's got that job. But then, as the enemy wants it, he went to hospital and he didn't have medical, uh, so he had to go to the state hospital that's in a ve- very bad condition. In any case, I only found out about it later. So he had to go for operation and I, I said, no, we'll pray for you. And we phoned him and we said, okay, uh, we prayed him out of that hospital in any case afterwards. But while he was in hospital, they, the company that he worked for was a big global company. They came and looked for him at home <laughs> that I never heard of so that he can sign his contract. I want to tell you guys, and Jason, that's with your little boy, Kish, Oli. If the God speaks, he speaks. He'll come and chase you down. If he said he's going to bless you and help on the way, he's bringing it. Even if people come to your house. When he was in hospital, the people wanted to come and check him and say, yes, your contract you have to sign. But how great will God open it if we just obey him that one thing? And, you know, somebody said, don't, don't mis, uh, mis- est- underestimate small beginnings. That's such a small thing that we just leave that will explode. Okay, let's move on. I see uh, David's looking at me. Um, <laughs> uh, power through love. Okay. How do we in, how do we root in God's love? Which, which, which one of you think, how do we root in God's love? Jesus said, keep his commandment. That's easy. If, if you, do you want to kill somebody that you love? Do you want to steal from somebody that you love? It's easy. So the Lord just opened that up. It's, I say it's easy. But again, we're coming back to the enemies. If we, would you love your enemy? Again, that some of you are thinking of that guy at work. <laughs> would you love him? The Lord said we should love our enemies. Let's read a, a scripture, Mark 12, verse 28 to 31. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reason together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asking, which of the first commandments of all, ah, sorry, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments, commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is not another, uh, there is no other commandment greater than this. Not love your neighbor's wife, love your neighbor. There's there's, uh, uh, agape, am I right? Agape love that we have for people, even if they, people won't understand, how can this guy so quickly forgive and just move on after I was like that with him yesterday and was rude with him yesterday. We get quickly offended and we'll keep that against them. What's that? We don't forgive their sins against us. You just let the baggage come and the baggage come till you can't walk and everybody, you don't forgive me, there's another one. Lord says forgive, let him go. So what's left for us to do as God's chosen ones? What's left for us to do? We just have to renew our minds. Think differently than what the world thinks. Let's look at uh, Romans 
12 verse 2. Don't copy the, the behavior or customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Thank you for that too, I mean. Guys, this is just a renewing of the mind. The way we think we have to change that. And it takes time. Don't think you'll change it in one day. When they shoot that guys, when the guys go to space, did you know that every half an hour or hour they have to change their direction? They just throw them to the moon. It's not like moon straight. You go straight there. It's they just throw them in the air. And then every 15, 13 minutes they have to re relook. That's how it is with us. We just have to renew our minds quickly. If you if you get on somebody that's against you very quickly and you, you what do you do? How dare that guy say that? Then you think about it. What are you doing? You're meditating on it. And it just grows. And it just grows. It's like the, the it's something that you got in your head. This this guy had a flat wheel and he, it was a dark night and he saw that uh, there's a farmhouse light on there in the distance and he said, I don't have a jack for my car. Ah, let me go and talk to that guy there where the light is. And it's a, quite a kilometer and he walks and he says, this guy will lend me his jack. Now what if he doesn't lend me his jack? Aye, he won't. Let me just go in here and he walks and he walks through the road. Ah, no, he will lend it. After a while he keeps saying, he won't lend me that jack. You know what? This guy's rude. He doesn't even, he doesn't want to, if he, if he doesn't lend me that jack, he, he's rude. Why won't he help me? I'm in, I'm in trouble here. But why won't he do it? Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's sleeping. This guy's meditating on this the whole time. And he knocks on the door and the guy's where the light was opened the door. He says, you know what? You shove that <laughs> jack. I don't need it. <laughs> then he turned around. Why? Because it's meditated on it. That's how we are. We just meditate and we make our minds up about people. And that's, that's how we think. That's how we go. We have to think differently. We have to change our mind. The Lord, give it to us. But you have to put something in there. You can't just leave it to the Lord. Just You have to change your mind over. Uh, okay, let's go back to Paul's letter. We're busy with Ephesians 3. Sorry, I digressed a little bit. <laughs> May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, though his mighty power is at work within us, like we just saw the spirit, soul, and body, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Just meditate on that, to accomplish infinity more than we may ask or think. He will give you something in your head and it's crazy. You think, no, how can I do that? I was sitting in a meeting in, in Sasso uh, in South Africa and we were in this meeting place and, and the Lord said to me, say to that guy, I want to heal him. And I thought, what's wrong with him? Uh, this place is full of people and it's quiet. He said, I will hit them with blindness. You just speak with that guy. He won't even hear you because the flesh is, I was still in the in the training. When I left there, everybody knew now. Because, you know, you, you uh, first of all, now I don't, don't know if it's fine. I don't want to take that chance. And I never did that. That's a guy that would have been set free. That's the the next, who's the big shots out there? That's the next guy that said, whoa, I really heard God today. It's like the, uh, the, the disciples. He told them before the time, I will be going ahead before you to Galilee. And when the angels told, was it Maria that said, he's going before to Galilee. And she went and told them, and they said, mm, really? Do we believe what the Lord tells us, or do we just leave it? We want to walk in the, in the spirit of the Lord, but we don't believe the small ones he, he gives us. If we read the Lord's word and all his instructions is in it, how can he give us something? How can he give us something extra? If you don't listen to his voice in the Bible, he gives us everything there. How can we want further instruction if we don't stay to the guidelines? That's 
That's a, a painful one sometimes. We want more, but we have to first do the least. And then in closing, here's the good news. And I wanted to make it big, if we can go to the next slide. Um, it's never too late. It's never too late. Each and every one that of you are sitting here, it's never too late. That two ladies that was here, Sue, here at the back, you know how proud God is of you for trying? Because you tried. You know how proud he is of you guys. And he's proud of each and every one of us. But the guys that goes out and tried, they maybe feel, uh, oh, I'm not getting this right. If you try something and fail, and not try something and have success, does that make sense? By not trying something, if you, that nothing that you're doing, you have, ex uh, have success in it. It's like the, the, it's like the wife that goes to the husband and she asks him, what are you going to do today? And he says, nothing. She says, didn't you do that last week or yesterday? He says, yeah, I'm not done yet. <laughs> so, let's go to Revelations, guys. Revelation 21. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. The former things have passed away. If you, if you go to heaven, must the angel drag you in? Say you've made it. And then the Lord will wipe the tears from your eyes. And you only realize how much power you had. And the Lord shows you. Let me show you. This is what I had planned for you. But you rejected there. You asked me for a word of knowledge. You rejected me there. You showed me that guy. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. Just trust in him. It's not, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to go out. But if the people is hard, their hearts are hard, it's difficult to go out. It's lost the chicken line, guys. It's not easy. I know it's not, it's not easy. There's still some people that I let go and then at night I'm, I don't feel good about it. There's something, the Lord gave me something and I just said, oh, I don't know about that one. It's, we just have to trust in Him. That's it. John 14, verse 16. And I will pray to the Father. He will give another helper that may abide with you forever. That goes back to Ephesians 1, verse 13. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. He will abide with you forever. Forever. He will never leave you. And then... It's all up to us to stir up the Spirit. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Paul also writes this. The same guy that wrote Ephesians. This is, the, this is why I remind you to fan into flame. Stir up. The Spirit, a spiritual gift God hath gave you when I laid hands on you. When Paul laid hands on us. We've got the Spirit. We have to stir it up. There the word says, stir it up. So come, Holy Spirit, stir it up inside of us. If there's, if there's any of you that think you would like that to be stirred up inside of us, we've got the Spirit inside of us. Let's ask the Lord to come and, and stir it up today. Let's start today. It's never too late. It's never too late for the Lord. It's not like Graham spoke this morning there. He said, uh, he spoke about the, the Lord's not a preference of any person. It's not, he will use anyone. Anyone. Somebody can come through that door and give us a word. And, and if it's from Him, we'll accept it. We'll know if it's from Him. Because we know them by their fruit. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. That it was here today that you brought the word, Father. And we thank you that you stirred it up in each and every one of them today. Let them go take this word 
Take it to the good soil, Father. Hundredfold, Father. If this is from you, we call it hundredfold in Jesus' name. And we thank you that your spirit will manifest, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. More. Let your presence come, Lord. In Jesus' name. Blessings, guys. Thanks so much, Andre. Can we thank Andre for his word to us this morning? You know, the big thing here, I reckon, is right at the end there, we need to be stirred up. The Holy Spirit lives in each of us, and we need to be stirred up. This morning, as we, as we break the meeting, if, uh, if you sense that the Spirit has been sitting flat in you, or simply you want Him to be shaken up even more, there's going to be a great opportunity to come down the front. There'll be spirit-filled people here who can pray for you and the spirit will be shaken up in you again. So let's do that this morning. And if, if there's other issues, things that are happening in your life and you really need God to break down, stand with you and believe with you and pray and speak truth over your life. I want to read to you as we leave from um, the book of Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to talk about, we're not talking about, um, we're going to talk about tithes and offerings now. In Proverbs chapter 3, we read this. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. So, you know, so often when we talk about giving to God, we talk about money. But this isn't just about money. This is about our time. This is about the best part of who we are as people. This is about our children. This is about so many things. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. And here's the promise. Then he'll fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. You know, when we give to God, when we give to people, when we give to charity, whatever we do, so often we think, oh, am I going to have enough? That's not how the economy of heaven works. The economy of heaven works that when we give to God, He gives back more than we can possibly imagine. So this morning as we leave, there's an opportunity to give to God at our uh, giving stations on the wall here and in the next room. Thank you and bless you to those of you who give online. Um, shall we stand to our feet? The band are going to play us out this morning, but uh, Lord, I just want to pray over this, this church right now, this great, great church. I pray for this, the people in this room, God. I pray for the people in the overflow room. I pray for the people online. Lord God, may they know your power surging through them, the enabling power of Christ as they move through their week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. You want to sing us out, Carl, as we go?